if you are a beginner and you would like to learn ui path activity wise then this is a great video for you let's get started once you have launched the ui path studio i'm going to click on process and let's give it a proper name i'm going to say automate with rakesh activity wise learning so i've given some name i'm going to give the similar name in the description and i'm going to click on create remember here i'm using the language vv you have two options c sharp and vv will go with vv one of the popular language used for ui path development now let's wait for few minutes for it to get loaded once it has loaded the next thing what you do you would find a tab called projects in this if you see the very first dependency or a package which is required for you to execute system dot activities is already pre-installed you can do one more thing you can click on manage packages and you can click on all packages and type ui path dot ui automation dot activities i'm going to install this activity and click on save once the installation is complete here you would see you would get more options in the design panel now you can see the ui path ui automation activities got installed i'm going to minimize now here on the center of your screen you would see a plus button you can click on this plus button and type your activity for example message box is one of the activity from ui path using which you can do many things similar way you can also find the activities in the left side panel there is something called activities panel if you search it here this is also one of another way of dragging and dropping an activity here okay these are the two different ways let's use the more easy way which is using this plus sign and then typing message box and i'm going to select the message box here now you see this is how the message box appears now let's understand what is the message box activity is all about it displays a pop-up message to the user used for debugging you can use it for debugging alerts or showing a value during execution it supports text variables expressions and concatenation so these are the couple of generic usage of the message box now let's see how you can use it to use it first of all let's type or display certain message let's start with hello welcome to ui path so once you have typed it all you have to do here you see a button i'm going to click on this button and it's going to start its execution So you can see the execution has started and it gave you a message on your screen. Hello, welcome to UI path. So the very first activity or exercise we have done displaying a message box on UiPath Studio using the message box. The next thing we are going to use a variable in a message box. For that, I'm going to omit the entire data from here. Below here, you would see a variable panel. Click on the variable panel and let's create a variable. Let's say I'm going to create a variable called user name and I'm going to assign a value to this one. I'm going to say John and this is a string kind of a data type. Now, once you have it typed, if you simply use the variable name, let's see what happens if you type user name the variable will automatically appear here and i'm going to hit on enter now what would happen because here i'm using a variable not the direct value the moment i'm going to execute this it's going to show me the value of the variable in this case the value is john you can see in the output we have got john i'm going to click on ok and then you can get back to your studio designer panel the next thing if i would like to print good morning john how can i do this so here you have the username variable 
all I am going to do within the double quote, I am going to say good morning and give a space. And here I am going to use a plus sign to concatenate my text with the variable and I am going to run the code. Now with this, you can see the pop-up message that appeared, which says, good morning, John. The moment you click on OK, again, you can get back to your UiPath Studio designer panel. Now in the message box, let's try to write a simple expression, wherein we are going to add two numbers. For this, I'm going to first remove all that I have written so far. I'll go to the variable panel. I'm going to delete the previously created variable. And now I'm going to create two variables. I'm going to say num1 and I'm going to assign the value 10 to it. And remember, this is an integer. So that's why the variable type, I'm going to change it to integer. The next way, I'm going to click on this and type number two. And here also the variable type, I'm going to change it to integer. And here I'm going to assign the value five. Now using these two variables, let's write something. For example, I want to say, now in case you find the screen is quite small, you can also click on this open in expression editor. You can click on this button. You can see the expression editor would appear. You can maximize this. And here in the expression, we can start writing it. For example, I want to say the sum of, sum of, and here I would like to sum what or the, the sum is equals to whatever you like to type, give a space, give a space here and I'm going to say plus and within parenthesis, I'm going to say num1 plus num2. Okay, both the variables have come. Now after this, what is the output we are expecting? The sum of it is going to sum so there's an expression here I've written num1 plus num2. Okay, they are not case sensitive. You can see I've written num1, but that's okay. It's going to work. And then finally, this output should appear. Here you can see there is a error. Do you see? It says compiler error, encountered processing expression. The sum equals to so and so option stick disallows implicit conversion from string. So there is an error. That means your expression is not correct. All you have to do simply say dot to string. You're converting the value, whatever the value comes into dot to string. Let's say you're not sure, you can also use, there is something called, do you see a fix? So you click on the fix. So automatically you see it has written dot to string. This is also another way. And once done, let's click on save. And let's execute this. So we have given 10 and 5. So the output should show me 15. Okay, you can see the sum is equals to 15. Now let me click on OK. Now you tell me in the comment section, what are the other things after you have learned this? What are the other things you have tried? Please do comment and let me know in the comment section of this video. So great for completing the very first exercise. Let's move on to the next one.